Hello and welcome back to the chapter two for information security class. Um, this is also the lesson two. And as you know, most of the videos that I bring online are within the within one hour, 30 minutes to two hours, if not more. So because of that, I've gone through and I've segmented each section of the each lecture in a timestamp. So if you want to move to any of the sections, you can skip through. You can click on the timestamp in the description of the video that you see. And you can go straight to that particular session and revise or maybe have a recap of what was done. Now, in chapter two for this course, um, we'll be talking about cryptography. And here we would um, briefly talk about the concept and also the techniques that are available whenever we, we, we think of cryptography. So as a way of recap, in the previous lecture, that is the chapter one or the lesson one, we went through the attacks on computer and also computer security, where I introduced what information security is, um, the need of security in our day, daily lives, why we need to secure the information that we have on a network or on service. Um, I also talked about the security approaches that are available and the principles of security. Um, we talked about the types of security attacks, the security services that are available, security mechanisms, and finally the model for the network security. I remember we spoke about the OSI model and the rest which you learned in first year. Now for chapter two, this is also going to be the mode of presentation. These are going to be the main topics that we're going to delve in. I'll introduce what um, cryptography is and, and we would have a fair view of what a plain text is and what a cipher, a cipher text is. And there are certain the techniques that we are going to employ here can be categorized under substitution or transposition. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll deal with how to encrypt and also decrypt some info, basic information um, using any of these techniques that falls under um, substitution or transposition. Um, these encryption methods can also be categorized under it's being symmetric or maybe asymmetric. We will talk about that. We will briefly delve into cryptography itself and steganography. We will talk about that one too as well. There are some key range and also the key size available that we normally employ in encryption. So we will talk about that. And possibly um, we will also deal with the types of attacks that are also available. Um, yes, so we'll talk about the possible types of attacks. Now, before we delve into today's activity, um, there are some basic technologies that I would want us to get ourselves familiarized with. The first one is whenever we talk of a cipher text, whenever we say cipher text, um, what we mean is the message is coded. So any message um, that is coded is then a cipher text. Now, when we hear the word cipher, cipher means it's an algorithm for transform, um, transforming any plain text to cipher text. So when we by saying plain text, plain text is like, let's say, some basic technologies used, like what we have here, is a plain text. It is easy to understand. But when it's in the form of a cipher text, it's, the letters might be jumbled up or written in a way that is uh, difficult to comprehend. So that is what is termed as a cipher text. So you need a cipher to change the basic um, some basic technology statements into a cipher text which is on 
and which is not easy for people to understand. So that message is coded. That is why we say for ciphertext is the coded message itself. The plain text is this whole statement. That could be the plain text. But the moment we apply a cipher to the plain text, then we will get a cipher text. The cipher itself is the algorithm that is being used to transform the plain text to a cipher text. There are lots of algorithms that are available. We'll talk about them as we move along. Now, in cryptography, when you say a key, a key is any information which is used in cipher. But most of the time, it is known by the sender and sometimes the receiver. So when we have a cipher text generated, we will need a key to to on um, to uncode the message which is being um, generated, which is being coded. So that is um, what is termed by, by the key. Sometimes the key is known by the sender, other times to the receiver. Both of them can receive it, depending on whether it's a, um, an asymmetric or it's a symmetric. We'll talk about that as we move along. The moment we say encipher or encrypt, so it is the act of converting plain text to cipher text. So we encrypt a message. So it means we convert the message from plain text to cipher text. We decrypt or decipher by uncovering the cipher text from the plain text. So we have a cipher, a cipher text which has been encrypted. The moment we decrypt it, it moves from the cyber text to the plain text, which is easier for users or the recipients to understand. Cryptography in itself is a study of encryption principles or the methods. So the study itself is cryptography. Now, when we say crypto analysis, um, crypt analysis or code breaking, it's also the study of principles of deciphering the cipher text without knowing the key. So the moments we have a cipher text and we, um, whoever has a cipher text, maybe the hacker has a cipher text and he doesn't have the key. The moment he tries to do certain things, he tries to analyze the cipher text to see the actual plain text without him knowing the key, we term that as the crypt analysis. So that is the study of um, the principles and methods of cipher um, deciphering the text itself without knowing the key. Now, cryptology is the field of both cryptography and crypt analysis. So when we have the field itself that involves Cryptography and also cryptanalysis system as cryptology. Now let's move on to today's activities. So with all these basic technologies in mind, let us now talk about what cryptography is. So cryptography in natural sense is the science of keeping information secure by transforming it into form that unintended recipients cannot understand. So when we have that information and we transform it into um, a form that the unintended recipients are unable to, they can't understand, that is cryptography. So it's a science itself. In cryptography, most of the time, um, an original human readable message, which is a plain text, is changed by means of an algorithm. So the plain text is changed by means of an algorithm or a series of mathematical um, operations into something that, to an uninformed observer, will be very, will be like gibberish. It, is, it will be garbage. It wouldn't be easy to read. So this gibberish, as I talked about, is what is termed as the cipher text. Now, cryptographic systems 
usually require some method for the intended recipients to be able to make use of the encrypted message. So usually, though not always, by transforming the ciphertext back into the plain text. So, still going on, when we say encryption, it is what we call the process of turning the plain, the plain text itself into ciphertext. So, crypt may make you think of um, make you think of it as something hidden or secret. So, encryption is an important part of cryptography. So anytime you think of cryptography, you should have in mind that encryption is one of the integral parts. But this does not encompass the entire size itself. Encryption, its opposite is decryption. So you encrypt plain text and you decrypt ciphertext to get the plain text. So there is one important aspect of encryption process that um, we have to have in mind. And that is almost always involves both an algorithm and also a key. To be able to do some sort of encryption, you would almost all the time um, have some algorithm in mind and also a key that you would use to unencrypt or decrypt the encrypted message. So as I spoke to you about earlier on, a key is just another piece of information, almost always a number. Sometimes it could be even no um, it could be the digits, it could be alphabets. And that specify how the algorithm is applied to the plain text in order to encrypt it. So even if the method by which um, some message is encrypted, it is difficult or impossible to decrypt it without a key. Uh, you can once you use an algorithm to encrypt it without a key, it's very difficult to decrypt it. But if you use crypt analysis to find out the plain text. Um, it is possible, but you have to. There are certain things that you have to delve into to be able to decrypt such messages. Now, cryptographic systems are generally classified into three independent dimensions. The first one is the type of operations which is used for the transformation of the plain text to the cipher text. So the operation that is involved. The second one is the number of keys that is being used for this operation. And also the way in which the plain text is also processed. So these are the three independent dimensions that you should have in mind when you talk about cryptographic system. Now let's talk about each one of them. The first one is the type of operation. So um, for the type of operation, and all the encryption algorithms are based on two general principles. And it could be substitution. So the encryption algorithm, as you can see here, they are based on two general principles. It could be substitution and it could be transposition. We will talk about each one of them. In the meantime, when we talk of substitution, it's, um, it's a case or it's a way in which each element in the plain text the elements in the plain text could be in the form of bits, letter, group of bits, or even letters. Most of the time, each element in the plain text is mapped into another element. So, for instance, if the key, if we have um, A, could be mapped to probably T, depending on the type of algorithm that we use for our encryption. So, for the substitution method, Okay, we have a plain text, hello world. So wherever you see L, replace it with maybe Z. And wherever you see O, replace it with maybe another letter. So that is a substitution. So we substitute or we map some of the elements in the plain text into another element by providing such elements based on the key. For transposition, um, this occurs when the elements in the plain text are rearranged. So the elements that we have in the plain text, like hello world, this time it could be le hell. Um, 
world or something. It's the, these elements or characters can be rearranged. That is transposition. But for substitution, wherever we see a letter, we can substitute another letter for that. And that can also be used for encryption. So most of the algorithms that you see in, in cryptography, they are either substitution or they are either transposition. Now, moving on to the number of keys that can be used. In symmetric key encryption, uh, most of the time we also term it as a secret key or a single key or a shared key or one key or private key encryption. So anytime you hear of in an exam or a quiz, if I say symmetric key encryption, I'm talking about maybe a single key, a secret key, a shared key, one key or possibly a private key encryption. So both the sender in such um, type of encryption, um, both the sender and the receiver shares the same key, which is used for both encryption and also decryption of the data. So um, in fact, um, the two keys may be identical or trivially the same. It might be related in one way or the other. So in that case, there is a very simple transformation required to go between these two. So in, in real usage, whenever we want to use this in real life, a secret is being shared by two or more parties. So for instance, um, I send you a message and for you to a message which has been encoded. Before I send you a message on WhatsApp, that message is encoded before you can decrypt the message. I might have already sent you a text message or had an interaction with you that whenever you see my encrypted message, you know, um, jump through each of the, each or uh, any other words to be able to decrypt whatever I, I want to um, tell you. So in that case, the recipient and also the, uh, the sender both have knowledge of the key or the secret, which is in this case the key. So in real usage, a secret is being shared by two or more parties that can be used for the maintenance of a private link for communication. So most of the time, um, and in fact, at the advanced encryption standards is one of the very popular algorithms that is being employed when we talk of symmetric key encryption mainly because it belongs to the family of symmetric key encryption algorithms. No, so that is about um, symmetric key. So with the symmetric key, there is the recipient and the, the sender both have knowledge of the, um, the key, which is just one key. Now, um, in public key encryption, um, two different but mathematical related um, keys are used. So the first one, the public key encryption encrypts data using the recipient's public key. So first of all, the public key encryption encrypts the data using the recipient's public key. And it cannot be decrypted without using the matching private key. So in other words, um, you will need one key to lock or encrypt the plain text and another key to unlock or decrypt the cipher text. So it is important to note that um, one key cannot be used in the place of the other when we talk about asymmetric or two key or public key encryption. So depending on which key is, is, is published, the public key encryption is can be used for two purposes. If the locking key is made public, then the system can be used by anybody to send private communication to the holder of the own locking key. So if the other way rounds, if the, that is the system makes it possible to verify documents locked by the owner. You should note that the public key encryption is an asymmetric key algorithm. But only some asymmetric key algorithms have the special property of being 
unable to reveal one key with the knowledge of the other. So um, the asymmetric key algorithm with this special property is most of the time called the public key encryption algorithm. So we need a public key and a private key. The public key is what is used more like the channel that would be used to do the encryption. And the recipient would have to have a private key, which he would use to, uh, to decrypt the message that has been encrypted using the public key. So here, the main difference between the symmetric key and the, um, and the asymmetric key, um, asymmetric key uh, of these two encryption, and that the public key encryption. Um, so from here, so from here, the main um, difference between symmetric key encryption and also the public key um, encryption is the fact that the symmetric key encryption use the same private key for encryption and also decryption. Whilst for um, the public key encryption, it uses both the public and also the private key. So both parties should know the key in symmetric key encryption. So while the, there is no such requirement for the public key encryption, in other words, only either one of the key is used, And this is known by the two parties in public key encryption. So we should be mindful that either one of the key is known by the two parties in public key encryption. And this is because um, it removes the need to share your private key, which is a symmetric um, key encryption, and the risk of having it compromised. So public key encryption can be considered more secured than the symmetric key. That's uses, public key uses private and public. But this one is just one key that is being used. So in terms of the way in which the plain text is being processed, um, there are two main, main ways that's, that could be done. So the plain text can be processed in, in a block cipher or even the stream cipher. When it's processed in the block cipher, it will involve the processes, the, it will involve the inputs and the block of elements at a time. So by producing output block for each input block. So by block, I mean to say, um, if this were to be, uh, this whole text, text sentence were to be a, a plain text that we want to cipher, we want to block cipher, we could move these, um, we could move it in blocks. So for instance, we can have TH as one block, which is being used um, as an input for another block, more or less. So a block cipher processes the input and block of elements. So in this case, it's th at a time. So we can have these two um, as inputs and a block of elements put together at a time and producing an output block for each input block. But for a stream cipher, um, it processes the input elements continuously, producing outputs one at a time as it goes along. So for that, we don't need to have it in a block by putting all these things together as a block, IT is together as a block before we do it. We could do each one of them one at a time in a continuous manner. All right, so we've talked about what cryptography is. Now let's talk about crypto analysis. So crypto analysis is the study of analyzing information systems in order to study the hidden aspect of the system. I've already spoken about this in the, in the beginning. So in crypto analysis, in encrypt analysis, is a process of studying cryptographic systems to look for its weakness 
or leak of information. So in a simple definition, you can also say that script analysis is a process of attempting to discover the plain text X or key K or both. The moment we try to um, attempt to discover the plain text, maybe the plain text which is represented by X and also the key or both of them without knowing them, that is script analysis. So that is about script analysis. With script analysis, we don't have, we have no knowledge of the key, but we will try to break it um, and get to know the plain text itself. Now, um, script analysis is used to breach cryptographic um, security system and gain access to such systems to have the contents of the encrypted message. So even if the crypt, um, cryptographic key is unknown, by using crypt analysis, we might be able to breach the cryptographic security system and have access to the, the contents of the uh, encrypted message. Now, there are various types of um, crypt analytics, um, analytics, analytic attacks. And most of the time, they are based on the amount of information which is being, which is known by the, the crypt analyst. So we have here the cipher text only. So as I said from here, there are various types of crypt analytic, analytic attacks. And these attacks are based on the amount of information that's, that the crypt analysts know. So if the crypt anal analysts know the cipher text only, so a copy of the cipher text alone is known to the crypt um, analysts. In this case, um, we will terminate as script text only. So that is one type of crypt, um, crypt analytic attack. But there, in, in situations where the crypt analyst has a copy of the cipher text and also the corresponding plain text, we will terminate as known plain text. But if he gains temporary access to the encryption machine, he just has with the temporary access to the encrypted encrypt, uh, encrypted the encryption machine, the machine which is being used for the encryption, we turn this as chosen plain text. And finally, um, if the crypt analysis obtain analyst obtains temporary access to the decryption machine, uses it to decrypt several strings of symbols and tries to use the results to deduce the key, this type of crypt analytic attack is termed as the chosen cipher text. And this can be represented over here. So these are the table, as you see, table 2.1, are the types of attacks on encrypted, encrypted messages. So we have the cipher text only where we have where the crypt analyst knows the encryption algorithm and he knows the ciphertext to be decoded. So these are the ones that I just talked about. So they are the types of crypt analytic attacks that are available when we talk of crypto analysis, um, crypt analysis, sorry. Now, there are two basic building blocks of all encryption techniques that I spoke to you earlier. I said we have the substitution and also the transposition. I first of all explain the substitution as, you know, being substituting certain elements in the, in the plain text with a different set of elements. The transposition also um, shuffling you know, the elements that we have in the plaintiffs. So let's delve into it one by one, because we're going to deal with the different types of uh, algorithms that exist between, exist when you talk of substitution. So the substitution technique is one in which the letter of the plaintiffs are placed by one letter, are replaced by one letter, are 
and numbers are symbols. So if we have a plain text, it is viewed as a sequence of bits, then the substitution involves replacing plain text bits pattern with a text bit pattern. Now, so in general terms, when we say substituting techniques, what we mean by it is that it's one of the techniques in which each element in the plain text is mapped onto another element. And there are about five or six different types of um, substitution techniques um, with set uh, words that can be used to encrypt uh, plain text. We have but there are a lot of them, but for, for the purposes of this class, we're going to talk about the main five. We have the Pisa Pfeiffer, mainly because it was brought up by Julius Pisa, who will explain each one of them. The Monoalphabetic Cipher, the Playfair Cipher, the Hill Cipher, the Polyalphabetic Cipher one time cipher let's talk about each one of them one at a time so the first one is the cipher um cipher uh, algorithm which is used for encryption of course it falls under the substitution technique now for the caesar cipher it is known to be the earliest um, cipher used for substitution cipher. Sorry. So for, for the Caesar cipher, this is the earliest known of the substitution cipher. And the simplest that was used by the Julius Caesar himself. So the Caesar cipher involves replacing each letter of the alphabet with the letter sending three places Better down the alphabet. So an example is what is being shown over here. So we have the plain text represented possibly in the alphabet, alphabetical order. So when we use the Caesar cipher algorithm to encrypt our plain text, what it's saying is that we replace the third um we replace the, the third letter with we replace the letter with the third letter that comes after it so for instance we have a b c d and all of that up to z which forms the plain text alphabet now by using caesar cipher it means from a we go to the third letter from a is b c d so it's d so in that case, A will be mapped to D, B will be mapped to E, and so on and so forth. So it goes that way. So the plain text is A, B through to Z, and its cipher text alphabet will now start with D, because from A, the next one is D. So the A letter will be mapped to D, and it goes on and so forth. So from M here, as you can see, the third letter after the M is M N, sorry, N O P. So M will be mapped to P in the cipher text alphabet. So that is how the Caesar, Caesar fiber, the Caesar um, cipher works. So this is a plain an example. Pay more money using Caesar cipher from P. Um, this is the plain text, the cipher text. We look for P, and after P, this is P. P is mapped to S, so we have S in here. A is mapped to D, so we have D here. Y, which is the plain text in the plain text, is mapped to B, so we have B here, and so on and so forth. So by using Caesar's cipher, we are able to encrypt any information that we have in our, that we want to hide from people by using 
um, by replacing it with a third letter that comes after each of the letters that we have in there. And it is obvious from here that, you know, this is not so the best. Anybody who has access to, um, who has knowledge of the Caesar cipher will be able to decrypt your cipher text. So the Caesar um, cipher involves replacing each letter of the alphabet with the letter standing three places further down the alphabet. I'm giving an example here. You should, mind, you should have this in mind that Caesar cipher is not a secured crypto system, mainly because there are only 26 possible keys to try out. So an attacker can try, you know, to carry out an exhaustive key search with available limited computational resources. You know, you'll be able to decrypt your information if you try using the Caesar cipher. And you should also note that um, the alphabet is wrapped around so that the letter following Z is A. So from here, you can see that the moment we got to Z, you know, W produce Z. We don't any, have any other alphabet after Z. So we'll start again from A, B, C. So that is a wrapping around of the alphabet, cyber, and cyber, cyber text alphabet. So when we get to Z, Z will proceed by starting with A, B, C throughout the moving on. So for each plain text P, all that I have talked about from here can also, from here, can be represented in the mathematical um, version as you can see here. So you can decrypt by using this mathematical expression to help do the encryption of your plain text. Now, Let's talk about the monoalphabetic cipher, which is the second substitution method which is used for encryption. So we have the substitution techniques. So we have the monoalphabetic cipher. Let's move on to that one. So when we talk of a monoalphabetic um, cipher, this is a substitution cipher first of all and it's also known as a simple substitution cipher so mono alphabetic um, cipher is also known as a simple substitution cipher mainly because it relies on a fixed replacement structure so here um, plain test characters are substituted by different alphabetic stream of characters shifted to the right or left by n position so whichever position that is being specified we would use it to do the encryption so when we compare this mono alphabetic cipher to caesar cipher these mono um, alphabetic cipher are more secure as each letter of the cipher text can be permutated can be of any permutation of the 26 alphabetic uh, characters leading to about 26 characters of 26 permutations. So we have 26 times 26, 26 times 25 times 24 through up to over n. So we find a um, so 26 permutation or greater than 4 times um, 10 to the power 10 to the 26 possible keys. So with a Caesar cipher, you know, we are limited to the next three, but with the monoalphabetic, the, the each letter of the cipher test can be any permutation of the 26 alphabetic, um, alphabetic characters that we have in there so therefore um if we if a is encrypted to r so instead of a being encrypted to maybe d it could be encrypted to r then every time you see the letter a in the plain text 
you can replace it with the letter R in the cipher text. So Caesar cipher is also mono alphabetic cipher, but this time round, it uses a key of three, but with the mono um, main simple mono alphabetic character um, cipher. We don't specify whether it's going to be two or it's going to be three, but it could be more than three. We choose whichever um, letter we want to map our plain text to. Um, we don't necessarily have to map it to the third character of the plain text character or element. We can map it up to any of them. So we have about 26 um, permutations that we can do in making a choice to fit the elements that we, we would use for the, the encryption of the plain text. So, but, it's, but although this is quite huge, you know, 4 times 10 to the power 24 possible keys that can be used for this, although it is quite good compared to the um, Caesar cipher, it is still vulnerable to crypt analysis. Um, so when a crypt analyst is aware of the nature of the plain text itself, um, what you can do is you can find, try and find out the, reg the regularities of the language and will be able to decrypt the plain text that you have in there. All right, so that is about mono alphabetic cipher. Like I said the Caesar cipher is an example of a mono alphabetic cipher which uses only the third step from the original letter that, is, that we have. But with the general mono um, alphabetic cipher, we are not limited to the third step, but we can choose any of the 26 letters that we have. So let's take an example of a mono alphabetic cipher. So let's take this one. A simple example is where each letter is encrypted at the next letter in the alphabet. So, for instance, we have a plain text hidden treasure. So, of course, we start with A, B, C through to Z, as you can see. Um, in fact, it has been broken down into two, um, into four rows, because if we should bring the whole of this to continue from here, the page will be so, um, will be. The, the text will be too small. That's why it's been broken. That's why it's been broken down into two. So we have A, B, C, M, N, O, P through to Z. So by from this, we can um, based on the key that is being given, we can map A to B, B to C, C to D, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we are using. The table shows um, how one might choose to or will try uh, lay them out of, of this example. So for this, we can have from the table, you know, we start from A, the, the, the plain text alphabet starts from A and ends with Z, and the, plain, the, cip the cipher text alphabet starts from B and ends at A. So you can see we are it is a mono monoalphabetic cipher with a key of one, not three as we see for the um, Caesar, um, Caesar cipher. So in this case, A is mapped to B, B is mapped to C, C is mapped to D, and so on and so forth. Z in the plain text alphabet is mapped to A of the cipher text alphabet. So if we are to um, encrypt this plain text. This is how it's going to be. So first of all, we look for H. H is here. H is mapped to I. So that's how come we have a cipher text letter of I beginning here. So the next letter in the plain text is I, and I is mapped to J. So we have J here. D. D is mapped to E. D is also mapped to E. E is mapped to F. T is mapped to U from here. You have T mapping to U, and so on and so forth. So by using a key of one, 
for this mono um, alphabetic cipher, we are able to encrypt the plain text, which is hidden treasure, to a cipher text, which is specified over here. All right, so in a quiz or an exam, we can be given um, a plain text and we'll be told to encrypt it based on maybe a key given of maybe 20 or six or seven. You should be able to encrypt that particular plain text. So to overcome these attacks, uh, multiple substitutions for a single letter are used. So for example, a letter can be substituted by different numerical cipher symbols, such as 17, 54, and so on and so forth. So even this method is still not completely secure, as each letter in the plain text affects on letters in the cipher text. In one way or the other, they are mapped. And if they are mapped, there's a likelihood that by using crypt analysis, the crypt analysis will be able to uh, decipher your, the crypt analyst will be able to decipher your plain text. You see how I'm using the, the keywords, the terminologies that we began with. Those terminologies, you should always have them in mind. Um, these terminologies to decipher, to descript, these terminologies, you should try and understand what's there. All right. So that is about the uh, monolithic cipher. Still on that, um, unfortunately, any attacker would simply break the cipher by using the frequency analysis. So by frequency, as you know, frequency is the highest number. The frequency of something. The frequency gives you the number of times something is represented. So monolithic attack is prone to frequency analysis. Um, and by this, the, um, the crypt analyst is able to observe the number of times each letter occurs in the ciphertext. And then looking upon the English letter frequency table, you'll be able to decrypt or decipher the plain text. So substitution cipher is completely ruined by these attacks. Monolithic attack, uh, monolith, monoalphabetic um, cipher are easy to break as they reflect the frequency of the original alphabet. And of course, um, a countermeasure is to provide substitutes known as the homophones for a single letter. We'll, tell, we'll deal with that. Now, um, that is about monoalphabetic cipher. Now, let's talk about the next type, which is the play pair cipher. As the name says, play pair cipher. It is the best known multiple letter encryption cipher, which treats that that which treats diagrams, not diagrams, which treats diagrams. And by diagrams here, there are two successive letters, especially letters uh, which is being used to represent a single sound. An example of a, di a, a diagram, a diagram can be um as it's like sh or sh. so when you have two letters <coughs> it's a diagram so it's the best known multiple letter encryption cipher which treats diagrams diagrams in the plain text as single units and translate these units into cipher text diagram <coughs> sorry so the Playfair cipher is a, diag it's a diagram substitution cipher offering a relatively weak method of encryption. So it is used for tactical purposes by, it was used some time back for tactical purposes by the British forces in the Second World War, which is the Boer War, and also that is in the World War I, and for the 
<laughs> same purpose it was also being used by the Australians and the Germans during the World War II. And they used this mainly because the fair play is reasonably fast to use and it does not require any special equipment to be able to compute the encryption of these plain decks. So in play, in play fair cipher, initially a key table is created. So most of the time the key table is a five by five grid or matrix of alphabets that acts as the key for the encryption of the key, um, of the plaintiffs. So the, the five by five matrix of alphabets is used as a key for encrypting the plaintiffs. So each of the 25 alphabets, five by five will definitely give a 25 alphabet. Must be unique. And one letter of the alphabet, usually J, is omitted. We don't add J in the in this particular type of cipher from the table as usual. But most of the time we replace J with the letter I. That is how come we have 25 alphabets. So um, if the plain text contains J, we'll replace the J with the letter I. All right. So this is an example. This is how an example of how the Playfair cipher key table looks like. So we can have it this way. So in this case, um, a key table can be like this. It's a key that is going to be used. So for this one, we can see T U C U O R all these. You can see all the letters of the alphabet are represented here with the exception of J. That is how come we are able to have a five by five matrix or grid containing all the five letters with the exception of J. Now the sender and the receiver decide on a particular key let's say tutorial so if they decide on the key say okay we want to use tutorial as our key in a play fair cipher so in the key table itself the first character going from the left to the right in the table is the phrase excluding the duplicate letters. So the letters that are duplicating, we exclude them. So let me go over again. For this particular type this, um, of cipher, the sender and the recipient decide on a particular key. And in our case, we are using tutorials as our key. So in the key table that you see in here, the first character, which is T, going from here to the left, from, from the left to the right, um, in the table is the phrase. And we exclude the duplicate letters. So tutorial is spelled as T-U-T-O-R-I-A-L-S, tutorials. So when we have it's duplicating. T is duplicating. That is why we wrote it once. We, we, we remove, we don't duplicate the letters. So the rest of the table will be filled with the remaining letters of the alphabet in natural order. So the moment we end with um, T, um, t tutorials, then we can see a is of course the, the first. So the next one will be B. So we continue B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, 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 up to Z. J is reflect, represented by I. So that's how come we don't write J in here. So the rest of the table will be filled with the remaining letters of the alphabet in the natural order. So we first of all, spell tutorial T U T O R I A L S. So the moment you are done, then Naturally, we continue with the lesson of the alphabet. So we have A here, so the next one will be B. So B, C, D, E, F, J, 
H is represented by I here. J, H, okay. I, J is represented by I here. K, L is already here. M, N, O is already here. So we we'll need to P. So this is a five by five matrix. And we don't repeat the letters in there. All right, so the key table works out to be the figure as has been represented over here.